Hello, and welcome to Hotter Pod, the book's podcast from Hotter and Stoughton. I'm Sarah Cole, Editorial Director for Languages at John Murray Learning. Today, I have the great privilege of interviewing our new Michel Thomas Method author, Akshay Bukaya. Hi, Akshay. Hi, thank you for having me. <laughs> yes, thank you for coming. Um, it's Pleasure. a bit dreary weather these days, so I appreciate you coming to London to talk about your Start Hindi course. It's a pleasure. <laughs> um, for our listeners, I just want to give a bit of background. Um, Hindi is the first new language in the Michel Thomas series in five years. The last one we published was Greek in 2009. So there is a lot of excitement going on at John Murray Learning about this new course, and um, there's been a lot of excitement from fans as well. And in fact, some fans have submitted questions, um, which I'll ask you at the end of at the end of the session, if you sure. don't mind. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Great. Um, I'd like to start by asking a few questions so our listeners can get to know a bit more about you. Um, first, you teach Hindi in Paris, is that correct? Yes, in fact. I, I've been teaching Hindi uh, as a foreign language for the past uh, 22 years, since 1992, at uh, the Inalco in Paris, which is, get this, the Institut National des Langues et Civilisations Orientales. Is that okay. clear? The National Institute of uh, Oriental. Oriental Eastern Languages and Civilizations in Paris. Okay. And for the past couple of years, I've also been teaching Hindi at the French Political Science Institute. Sciences Po. Sciences Po. Ah, you know about la. that. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Um, and... So you've answered my question about how long you've been teaching it, 22 years. Mm. And why do your students want to learn Hindi, do you find? For all kinds of reasons, or for no reason at all, which is one of the best reasons, you know. Mm. Some of them just love the lang language, the sound of the language. They've heard it, you know, either with Indian friends or typically Bollywood movies mm, and songs. That's one of the major, you know, uh, catchment areas, if you like. Okay. And uh, then there are people who are hoping to get a posting in India, you know, with their companies. Uh -huh. you know, it's like uh, Renault or Alstom, uh -huh. you know, French companies in India. Sometimes people go and work there. And uh, some of them have married Indians. Okay. So that's a good reason. Yes. And, uh, well, all kinds of reasons. And, in fact, I teach in a special service called... Uh, you know, uh, Formation Continue, which is the Continuing Education Department. Mm -hmm. There are no degrees, no grades. So it's people who are really interested in learning how to speak, especially not in getting, you know, grades or getting certified. Okay. Or there are no examinations. So it's people... And you have people, a lot of students in these courses. Quite a bit. I mean, we have groups of uh, 15 when we have evening classes. When we do intensives, we try to keep the groups shorter. We have... Mm -hmm. Uh, week-long intensive courses, especially in the summer, and um, otherwise we have evening classes. So it's basically for people who aren't full-time students, you know, they're working, or students okay. elsewhere, not full-time Hindi students. Okay. And in our institute, we also have full-time Hindi students, but I'm not in that section. I see. Okay. Okay. And why, in your opinion, is it a good language to learn? You've given me some ideas. Mm -hmm. Bollywood, marriage, anything else that you would say why people should learn Hindi? Well, uh, it's the presence of Hindi in the world. Hindi and Urdu, for me, is mm -hmm. practically the same thing. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar with we do this have whole thing. A, you know, a uh, the difference Hindi is books. basically in the script on the one hand, but since we're, Michelle Thomas is basically about all about learning to speak, mm -hmm. the script doesn't matter mm -hmm. much. And uh, with some specialized vocabulary, which tends to be more, you know, Persianized, mm -hmm. and you call it Urdu, and especially in academic texts, you know, editorials and politics and, you know, even religion, that kind of text would have more of Sanskrit-based words. It's a bit like having a lot of Latin words in your English. So you are know? you saying they could be mutually understood? Perfectly. Oh, okay. It's the same language unless you say something very complex and, you know, philosophical, where, mm -hmm. you know, the complex of vocabulary would be taken from, you know, uh, the classical roots, which are different, you know. Mm -hmm. But something like uh, a Hindi movie, you know, the typical Bollywood movie could be called an Urdu film oh. or a Hindi film. It's the same thing because there's nothing, that. nothing to read, okay. you know. And uh, 
Hindi is making strides, you know, big strides, especially um, with, with this mix, which we often call Hinglish. Mm. You know, I mean, even in English literature, uh, writers like Salman Rushdie for the past many years, you know, since the 80s, um, when they, uh, you know, when it's happening in India, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of Hindi, which, you know, comes into English literature, okay. you know, and uh, this new mix, you know, is becoming uh, quite a widespread, you know, well-known uh -huh. new language, you know. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's an interesting phenomenon, I yeah. guess.